Welcome to the Beach Grove United Methodist Church Podcast, where you can hear our Sunday morning sermons in audio form and take them wherever you go. A reminder that if you want to watch the entire service, our services are available on our YouTube channel linked in the podcast notes. We would love it if you would subscribe to the podcast so that new sermons come into your feed as soon as they are available, and you can do this using your favorite podcasting app. We would love it if you would help to support the missions and ministries here at Beach Grove through your tithes and your offerings. A donation link is also linked in the notes below. And lastly, find us on Facebook and Instagram to follow along with all the fun things happening at Beach Grove, whether you live in Suffolk, Virginia or not. We hope you enjoyed this week's message, and please don't forget to share it with others. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord, Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you. That through your word for us this day, we would continue to learn more about you, more about the kingdom that you have called and created for us as we continue to grow closer in love and grace to you. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I've been pondering something recently. This is, I mean, actually, I ponder on a lot of things recently, um, but, but specifically this one thing. As we've been coming back and reintegrating ministries since COVID, my mind keeps on thinking about something. This, this church, Beach Grove, like we've been through a lot in the past few years, right? I mean, COVID starts, you get a new pastor, then you don't know that pastor, that pastor has to reopen the church. Then you finally get a chance to know the pastor. You see he's just as crazy as you thought he was. I thought that'd get a little more laugh. (laughs) And yet my mind continues to wonder as we continue to do this work of church together is that sometimes do we expect too much from the church? This is not to say oftentimes expecting too much of the people, though uh, that could be a topic for another whole series that we could spend a year on. What? No, do we think of the church more than it actually is or more than God ever intended it to be? Now, I know you might be wondering, Pastor, this is, seems like a very dangerous line of thinking that could lead us down a very dark path that leads to no church in the future. And I would say, whoa, 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 friends. I need, I need a job. However, as I've continued to think about this, I've continued to wonder even more so if we place too much pressure on the church to be something that it is not. You see, the thing about the church, the great thing about the church, is that it is what it is supposed to be. It is a close community of Christians who have not only covenanted with God, but have covenanted with one another to do this thing we call life together. Sometimes I think the problem and the understanding that we get caught up in most of the times is we expect the church to meet needs that it cannot meet. Right? We put persons or the institution itself on a pedestal. 
seeking needs that we just cannot expect from the church at large. We demand things that we think we need ourselves, and we neglect that the church is a community that is called to live together. What if church is meant to be community? And what if, in community, it meets the needs of those who are together? What if when we expect more than that, the church itself, the institution, begins to fall apart, begins to crumble, begins to put certain individuals over other individuals, or we begin to lose sight of what we are truly called to be? What if the church is meant to be community, where all are called to be bonded together in Christian love, to use their gifts in their own special ways? What if there was no expectation? What if there was shared responsibility? What if we came to experience the joy of one another's presence and gather for worship, praise, and deeper relationship with God, not expecting something, but rather coming to give out of our own understanding of faith? What if church was less physical and more action-based? More, I mean, what if church was less physical and more spiritual based on the actions of our life together? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Pastor, this seems like a semantics argument. It seems like you're just trying to use different words for something we've always done. And while that might be true... I often think the language that we use when we gather together should be intentional. Why? Because the more that we use this intentional language to describe this nature of community, the more it becomes an embedded part of our understanding. When it comes to talking about the church, we have to move our mindset away from the physical. We have to move our mindset towards the spiritual as we look at this life together. Not meeting the spiritual needs of any one person, but meeting the spiritual needs of the community at large. Not seeking to serve ourselves, but seeking to serve God through this nature of kingdom work. Yes, we are called to work as the church, but the church in its inherent calling is about a sense of spiritual community that strengthens us for that work. We gather together because we know that God has called us to be truly amazing and awe-inspiring people. And when we gather together, we do not do so wanting to lift up any one person, wanting to even lift up ourselves, but to gather together so that we can learn, grow, and be strengthened together as a community. And when we try and separate that understanding, we begin to look like the Corinthian church. Right, sometimes we come to church many times. Y'all come to church wanting the pews to be filled. You want a biblical-based sermon. You want certain things from the presence of our building. However, what if coming to church was about being in fellowship and community with one another? About hearing the word of God spoken to us here and now today. What if, the live, what if the lives of grace and love echoed forth from this place so that all who felt it, all who saw it, could experience what God You know, as we have been uh, going through and started this series, looking here in some of these glimpses of the kingdom, we've noticed and know it's the presence here and now, as well as this anticipation of God's eternal reign. Right, last week we looked at baptism, we came together and we looked at the water that covers Jesus, the water that covers us, the water that calls us both to repent and to come to righteousness. The water that calls us not to turn away from something, but to turn towards God. And now as we turn and we begin to look at the institution of the church itself, as we begin to look at this embodiment of community that we experience right here, right now, We're going to turn our attention away from the Gospels for a little bit, and we're going to turn our attention towards the writings of Paul. And possibly, and if you've ever read all of the epistles that are located in the New Testament, probably one of the harshest critiques of one of the early churches. 
I remember when I was in my New Testament class in seminary, we often would imagine what it would look like if Paul ever wrote a letter to the church in America. And I have to imagine it probably is going to look a little like 1 Corinthians. Why? I think because if we look at a definition of dysfunctional, the church of Corinth is going to be there. And so we may be asking ourselves, well, then why is a dysfunctional church featured in the Bible? Now, I say, why not? We got to learn from somewhere. Right, I think that this letter can help us gain insight as we seek, not to, not to, I'm not calling us dysfunctional. I mean, I think that there's a lot of problems with the church at large, but I think we can overcome them. But I think when we look at Corinthians and we see the things that the Corinthians were struggling with, we can look and see what it looks like to practice community together here and now. Because the community that Paul talks about, the community that Paul is driving the Corinthian church to, the church that he is trying to teach them what it looks like, is a church that gathers together in the perfect love of God, living into this understanding of God's grace, continuing to sanctify us. And so as we continue to look into this understanding, and we look into this, this introduction to Paul's letter to this church in Corinth, we begin to unpack and we begin to see that at the heart of what is happening in this church is this loss of this nature and this sense of community. Right? It's reminding us this place that community holds in our civilization. Right? The church is more than just a handful of people. It's more than just a leadership council. It's more than just a pastor. It's more than any one person in the pew. The church is a community of broad and diverse ideas, voices, and understandings. And so it's important for us to know and recognize the community as a whole instead of trying to pick apart every little piece of the community that we think should be there. There is a humility in the present and what God has done. And there is an understanding of looking towards what God can do when we set aside our own expectations for the church and allow the expectations of what God calls the kingdom to be to reign forth. Right, if you read through the letter, the first letter to the Corinthians, we see that there's this manner of superiority among various members of the community. And if we look beyond the passage today, we see all sorts and manners in which this is manifested through Paul's writings. Whether it's in leaders in the community, whether it's in the way they practice the sacraments, whether it's in the way that they serve others. And we see Paul trying to get the church to recognize the way in which all the persons who are part of the community have a role to play we might consider and look at Paul addressing the entire Corinthian community, calling them to recognize the role that Christ plays in the church and for each and every person in the community to take up that role. And we hear Paul speak and encourage to the community. Once he has given grace, once he has introduced himself, he calls upon this community to recognize what is at the heart of their life together. Paul using you as a corporate you Addressing the entire body to begin to understand the church corporately as a whole. The variety of understandings, gifts, and talents that are at play. Paul is speaking to the proud and the meek when he says, as you gather together in community, just as the testimony of Christ has, strengthened, has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. An emphasis on what is already present in our communities. All the gifts we need to fulfill God's vision for the church are already here. Now, that's not to say that we stop inviting people to church. Don't hear that. But for where, Paul, but for where God is calling us right here, right now, on January the 15th, Everything we need to fulfill God's vision 
is here. It's within our midst, it's within our presence. It's in our hearts, it's in our spirits, it's in our souls. And it's in our calling. It's up to us to live into that. It's up to us to work together. To do this work of God. To come together as a community. And we ask ourselves, what does this mean for us? What does it mean for us to be community together? To recognize that we are not lacking the gifts that God has offered to us. To recognize each and every one of us that we have gifts to offer to this community. To recognize that there are folks in the community who may be able to pick up where we are unable to. To recognize that we are in life together. And to stop expecting the church to just happen. To stop expecting the church to just meet all of my needs. But rather be a part of the community. Live and serve and work together. Right, I use this worship service as an example. A great embodiment of what it looks like to work together as a community to oftentimes sacrifice what we expect from community so that we can form community together. Right, as we sat down last year and we envisioned what one worship service would look like so that we could gather together, all of us, without separate services, but be one community together to reinvigorate that sense of togetherness. And as we've come together, we lay aside our differences oftentimes, sometimes even laying aside our own expectations and finding new, miraculous ways that we can grow together. Right? God has strengthened us. I mean, I truly believe that. Can I get an amen? God has brought us great leaps and bounds from where we have been. God has blessed us. God has given us all sorts of things when we recognize the gifts that were at play right here in this congregation. When we offered among it a way for us to live and grow together as a community guided by the vision that God has placed before us. And so when we look at it, what do we expect from the church? Honestly, our expectations for the church should rest in God's intentions for it. What has God always promised the kingdom to be? What has God always promised the church to be? In what ways is the Spirit present among us? What role do we play? Recognizing our own gifts and finding the role that we are called to play in this community. Find the way that we are called to live into God's kingdom. And find the way that we are called to live together. Amen.